Hello, everyone, and welcome to the June edition of Wired for Hybrid. Uh, this month was a busy one, so Michael and I will get right into it. So stick around. Hey, Michael, how you doing? Awesome, Pierre. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, vacation plans on your end? We had a vacation a couple weeks ago, kind of just hanging around the home for a while. We got something later in July, but, you know, maybe take a little bit of extra time over the July 4th weekend, but uh, pretty much just chilling around the house, dealing with the, uh, unfortunately, we're getting the after effects of the of the Canadian wildfires are finally reached us down here in Wisconsin, which is, you know, kind of a tragic thing up there. But I digress. What do you got going up for vacations? Well, uh, based on those fires uh, that are raging uh, up here, I'm kind of playing it by ear. So I'm not sure if I'm going to go in July or August. We'll figure it out uh, maybe a little later. If uh, hopefully uh, though everything gets uh, under control. But anyway, uh, as I mentioned, this was a busy month. Absolutely. And so like one of the things with, that we released is actually kind of a, it's a twofer. So a two in one. So we had a general release for ICMP V4 pings being supported on load balancer. And then Finally. about two weeks later, we found out that not only ICP v4, we support v6 pings okay. and trace route. So you can use ping and trace route, ICMP v4 and v6 to verify your load balancer and the workloads behind them. So people might be like, well, I've done this before, not over ICMP, you probably have not. You've been using yeah. other tools like TS ping, some that go over different protocols, but now that we have that support for ICMP v4 yeah. and v6 use, using those two tools that are available to pretty much everybody. That's very cool. Uh, Cause we've been waiting for that forever. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, one of the important things for people to remember is that, okay, you're not actually going through the load balancer and to your workloads. Load balancer is taking your request. It's doing the work for you, providing you the request back. Okay, so Preventing it's not actually going through. It's just the load balancer is telling you, yes, that the workload is there. You're We're good. Absolutely. So, okay. you know, people don't have to worry. Oh, now they opened up ICMP. Now... You know, I got to worry about pings of death and things from the late 90s are going to come back and haunt me. No, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Is that load balancer is handling all of that. And chances are that's probably handled somewhere up the stack from load balancer. But you don't have to worry about those back end workloads because they're going to be, they'll, they'll be perfectly fine. And you'll Perfect. be able to tell both on prem. So you can do it from your on prem clients. Yep. You can also do it from inside. Azure virtual machines as well, if you need to test the, the load balancers from an Azure VM. And I worked on the documentation with the product team on this. So we have it fully documented for you, whether you're running Windows or Linux, the tools for each platform, we have you totally covered. So check out, definitely check out our documents if you're interested in this and need more info on it. I mean, it's not it's not rocket science, it's ping. It's a tool we've been using for 30 odd years, but yeah. I think it's an important tool now in your tool set that you can use along with everything else for managing your workloads. Absolutely. Uh, I believe your second item is also about load balancer. Absolutely. So one of the things that we just went GA is that Azure load balancer per VM limit has been removed. So previously, Virtual machines on Azure had a limit to the number of load balancers that they were allowed. So yeah. you could have one public and one internal. Now those have been removed and you're just simply limited to the limits for load balancers, virtual machines that are in Azure. And we've got a link for you to, 
to go yep. through all of those limits as well. And chances are you're probably not going to be using like a hundred load balancers going to a single VM. But I think there's probably some instances where you'll definitely have multiple VMs or multiple load balancers connecting to a VM or a workload. Well, I can see scenarios where if you've got like your pro, your front end and you've got your your business logic and you've got your database and you may have like file storage somewhere that some or all of those uh, tiers of your application need to be behind a load balancer, depending on how it's architected, of course. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, as we see our organizations in the cloud starting to scale and starting to get more complex, you know, this removes one of those limits for a mature product like load balancer, just simply opening it up based on, on customer needs and the needs of organizations as they're growing. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's your um, third item for this month? So the last thing I have for us is related to Azure Firewall. So generally available, now have access to policy analytics for Azure Firewall. And this is a pretty cool add-on because what this does is this is going to look at your policies and rules and allow you to be able to monitor your policies and rules. Why this might be important is that one of the things that we've seen in the cloud, just like we've been dealing with for decades on-prem, is that as you use something over a period of time, you start layering stuff on top yeah. of each other. And, and as administrators, we all know how hard it is to really see what is the effect of all of these hands that have been in here making changes. So this allows you to be able to get better visibility into the policies and rules that are impacting your organization. So this might be perhaps you've over policy your organization and it's and now you're blocking legitimate traffic because of mismatching rules or yeah. maybe because you've had so much stuff going on you have a new attack threat but you thought it was covered but it's not being covered and you're not sure where you know something's going wrong because yeah. you know somebody might have thrown an allow rule in there where it should have been a deny and, you know, that stuff happens when you have people doing all of this. So this gives you some great visibility into your firewall, which, you know, I think you can agree with me is probably for your Azure workloads, one of the most important security pieces as part of your Azure networking infrastructure, along with a well-architected uh, network, network layout. Yeah. And... And anytime you get more visibility and and monitoring capabilities into your environment, because monitoring capabilities uh, inherit like alerting and so on and, and reporting, uh, that's that's just just as good practice to have. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So that covers mine. So I think you've got some cool stuff for Azure front door for us, right? I do. I do. Um, just like you, uh, you had a twofer. I have a threefer, uh, meaning there are always three announcements. Me. Pardon me? You're always just, looking to top me, aren't you? Well, it just happened that way. Um, but it's not a competition, Michael. It is not, a, not competition. a competition. Uh, no, Azure Front Door, three announcements. Uh, number one is that Azure Front Door integration with uh, managed identity is uh, generally available. And to me, out of the three announcements, this is the one that people should pay the most attention to. It means that your Azure front door now can become a managed identity within Azure AD. It could be a system-generated identity or user-generated identity. But because it's got, it's now a known entity within Azure, uh, and I, AD, now we can assign some access rights to that. So, for example, your Azure front door may now, now would have access uh, or managed access to your key vault for certificates, for secrets that if it needs to access 
a uh, hardened like storage array or, or anything of that nature. So that's really big in terms of security, uh, but also eliminating like secret rollover that we have to do all the time if it's configuration based. So now you create a managed identity for your front door and uh, you let Azure manage the rest of it. That's awesome. That's yep. awesome. Uh, the number two and number three announcement for Azure Front Door are kind of related. So number one is you can now upgrade from premium or from standard to premium without any downtime. So you go to the portal or you go to your command line to put however you decide to uh, to manage your environment and just change the configuration or change the SKU from, pre from uh, standard to premium and it's done. Uh, there are no migration. There are no downtime. It's just as soon as you turn it on, you now have access to those added capabilities that premium gives you. And those added capabilities are WAF that's included uh, and also uh, uh, private link at no additional cost. And of course, there's like the Microsoft managed rule set. Uh, that is not available in standard, but is available in uh, Premier or Premier um, Premium. And if you have uh, any info, uh, I'll have the link down there for the comparison of the different tiers. The third and final announcement for Front Door is kind of related to that. Uh, but if you want to migrate, let's say, or if you want to up up your tier from Classic, and I'm not even sure if you're allowed to uh, deploy Classic anymore. I don't think so. I don't think so. We'll we'll make sure that uh, it's in the show notes. Anyways, if you have classic and you want to go to standard or if you want to go to premium, uh, because classic, you have to create your profile. And uh, if you will go from classic to, to standard, normally you'd have to recreate your profile or migrate your profile. Now there's a, a generally available way of doing the migration to automate the migration for you. So it basically takes your profile and moves it over uh, on your behalf uh, without you having to recreate everything manually. So, oh, that's cool. Those are the, the three announcements for Front Door. And I think, uh, like I said, uh, the managed identity one is uh, far and beyond uh, the most important, the most valuable one uh, that I can see here. Yeah, for sure. You know, that it just allows you to better manage and not have to worry about you know, a bunch of different things. And I also think the, the you know, moving the classic to standard, standard to premium without uh, downtime, I think that'll help a lot of organizations because there might be times where, you know, one of the things you get with premium is you get that bot protection is like, you know, if you're coming under an attack and it's coming from bots and like you want to flip the switch on that, if you have to put it into a project and do a migration and stuff like that, Nobody wants this. Now you can just, you know, go through the process. Boom. You don't have to worry about your stuff going down. You can bring that protection online. So yeah. I, I think it's, you know, one of the things you've mentioned previously, we've talked about throughout these shows, our products are evolving based on our customer feedback and they're not necessarily becoming different. We're just adding those fine tuning to allow you to better utilize these and to provide you the, the better value and more security and protection in your environments. Yeah, and those changes, as you mentioned, are based on your feedback. And I'm talking to not you, Michael, but the 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 audience watching this. So if you have more feedback, like leave it down here. Uh, I will probably give you a link here where you can uh, give your feedback, and we'll connect you to uh, to the right product group. But it is definitely. Uh, in response to customer feedback. Awesome. And All I right, think you last, have one more for us. I do, I do. So the last one is uh, we now have private link support for application gateways. So as you know, application gateway is a layer four kind of load balancer uh, or a web traffic uh, load balancer. It allows you to like manage incoming traffic to different pools uh, in the back. So. Nothing has changed. So if you've got, um, it's still uh, IP port to IP port, but also making decisions based on if the URI has like video in it, it'll send it to the, to the 
the, the pool that's like optimized for video and so on. So none of that has changed. Now, what has changed is that the incoming to a load balancer can come from a private endpoint or a private link. So what that means is if you have all of your workstations in, a, in an hybrid environment, whether they're VDI stations in the cloud or physical stations in your environment connecting through a remote gateway or a virtual gateway, you can actually go through your own VNets without ever hitting the internet through that private link to your application. So if it's an internal based application, you can do that. Uh, you could do that from different tenants and different subscriptions. So that kind of opens up possibilities in terms of how you secure traffic between your people, your clients, uh, and your application. That's awesome. And I, I think that's, you know, we're, as we're seeing as the, the growing and the progression of people's cloud workloads is that we're seeing more things that people are working with in the cloud, not just yeah. connecting to it, but inside. And so, you know, things like this are great, again, a great addition to allow you to be able to use that Azure backbone and keep things off the public internet. And uh, so this is a great addition, great, just another great, uh, I'm sure based on hundreds of customers, you know, stuff like that and telemetry and yep. little squirrels finding things. And <laughs> Anyway, we will continue to work on that. And if you continue to give us your uh, feedback, we will continue to make changes. Absolutely. All right. Hey, Michael, it was uh, absolutely wonderful to see you again. Uh, last time we talked was right before your vacation. So uh, welcome back. And for you at home, uh, please uh, like and subscribe so that uh, you don't miss any of them. We had uh, two deep dives that we published a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Uh, take a look at those. I'll uh, also put the link down here. And if you have any suggestion as to what kind of Azure or hybrid networking you want us to deep dive in, let us know in the comments below. And with that being said, Michael, thanks for uh, another uh, great participation. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Pierre. All have right. a good one, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>